Let's do some example problems for accuracy and precision. Here's something that an old high school teacher of mine used to do. It's pretty fun. He'd go outside and put two stakes on the lawn at either end of the school. And then he'd use a super accurate measuring device to find out the exact distance between them. And then he'd challenge us to measure it ourselves. But we couldn't use rulers, we couldn't use meter sticks, we couldn't use measuring tape. So we'd have two or three minutes to figure out a quick way that we'd measure it. Some of us in the classroom would find out the length of our arms or how tall we were or um, the length of our stride, which is a distance that we'd go each time we took a step. Then we'd have to go outside and use whatever me measurement method we could come up with to figure out how long this length was. Um, he'd divide us into groups. Each of us would do multiple measurements because usually doing multiple measurements is a good way to even out any errors that might show up. And then we'd have to go back in the classroom, report our data, and see whose was most accurate and whose was most precise. Now, what made this fun is that there was a big cash prize that he'd give um, for people who really, for the group that really aced this. So, using this as an idea, um, let's look at some examples of the data that we could get from this accuracy um, and precision examples, okay? Let's say that he measured this out, and just for argument's sake, the distance was exactly 500 point zero feet. And group one does a few measurements and uh, they come up with 472.4 feet is the first of their measurements. Then they do 476.0 feet for the second measurement and 475.3 feet is a third of their measurements. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to average these together. I'm not going to do this for all the groups, but let's just review how we're going to do this. Okay, So we're going to take um, all three of them together, add them up, and then divide by the number of measurements. So 472.4 plus 476.0 plus 475.3. Add those up and divide by 3. What about significant figures here? Well, these three numbers up here are all measurements. So we're going to need to worry about significant figures for them. There are four significant figures in each of these numbers. The three, this is a number that we got by counting. One, two, three. It's a number of measurements that the groups took. So we don't have to worry about significant figures for this. Since this is a number that we got from counting, it has a, an infinite number of significant figures, which means that we're going to be rounding our final answer to the four significant figures that are in our starting numbers. Add these up divide by 3, and our answer, the average, is going to be 474.6 feet. So, group number 1 will say that their average here is 474.6 feet. Let's look at this. Is this accurate, and is this precise? Okay. Well, if it's accurate, as we said in the previous lesson, it means that it's spot on to the actual value. The actual value is 500.0. So 474.6, it's not really accurate. If it's precise, it means that the numbers, each measurement that the group took is close, um, that each of the measurements are close together and that they are consistent. Well, 474, 476, 475, Precision is always relative, but I'd say that these are, these are pretty precise. They're consistent with each other, and they're close together. So group number one, accurate, no. They're a ways off from 500.0, but precise, yeah, they're pretty precise. Let's take a look at group two. Group two's data is here. 503.5, 502.8, and 497.4 feet. They add these three up and divide by 3, again, because when we do multiple measurements, we take the average to help to, um, to smooth out any kind of errors. You take these and you get uh, 501.2 feet is the average there. So, let's say, is this accurate and is it precise? Well, if we're comparing 500.0 to 501.2 feet, yeah, I'd say it is pretty accurate. It's very close to the actual value. Precise, how close together 
um, are these measurements. How consistent are they? 503, 502, 497. Considering that this group uh, isn't able to use rulers or measuring tape or meter sticks, yeah, I'd say it's pretty precise. They're able to get them pretty close together. Accurate and precise. So that's group two. And here's group three. Uh, 530.2, 480.5, and 521.6 feet. Add these up and divide by three, and what we're going to get is 477.0 uh, feet. Again, let's ask, is this accurate and is it precise? If it were accurate, it means it would be right spot on to the actual value. 500.0, no, it's nowhere close. Accurate. No. And is it precise? How close, how internally consistent are each of the group's three measurements? Well, we have everything from 430 to 520. This is, this is a 90-foot spread. Precise? Are they close together? Absolutely not. So group three's measurements are neither accurate nor are they precise. These guys are definitely not contenders um, for my teacher's cash prize. When we talked about accuracy and precision before, we used an analogy of uh, hitting a bullseye target. Let's review that quickly. Group one, we said was not accurate, but they were precise. We could symbolize their measurements using this bullseye target here. Accuracy, again, if they hit the bullseye, it means they get 500.0 feet right on the nose. They didn't get that. Instead, they were off from the target because their average came around around 474. But precise, yeah, all their measurements were very close together. So the hits on the target board, although away from the center, are grouped together to show that it's not accurate, but it is precise. Group number two was accurate and it was precise. So using our bullseye target, um, we can symbolize it like this. All the hits are very close to the center, very close to the actual value, and because they're precise, all the numbers are also close together. So accurate and precise, symbolized by the target here. And finally, let's look at group three. Group three is kind of all over the place, which we see by the lack of precision, everything from 430 to 521. And we can symbolize it by this bullseye target. Did they hit the bullseye? No. Uh, 470? Their accuracy was not close. And similarly, their precision, they were all over the place. So this is what a representation of not accurate and not precise for group three would be. So we've looked at accurate, uh, we, we looked at examples that are accurate, precise, and so forth. Some of you may be wondering, what about a fourth example? Is it possible to be accurate but not precise? Here's a hypothetical, maybe group four's examples. Their numbers, as you can see here, are all over the place. They range everywhere from 64.8 to 1,211. But when we add the three of them up together and take the average, we get exactly 500.0 feet. This seems like an accurate answer because we said that the actual number really is 500.0 and their average is also 500.0. But here's the thing. The numbers range so widely that the precision is absolutely terrible. We could say that this is an example that is accurate but not precise. But I'll tell you something. Usually when we're doing measurements, precision tells us how much we should trust our measurements. And so even a hypothetical example like this, which yes, gives us an accurate answer, if there's nowhere near a good degree of precision in measurements, we tend not to trust it. We tend not to have much faith in it, right? So we look at data like this and say, yeah, well, maybe the average did come out very close to the actual number. But this is so messy. The chance that you would actually get this average from this wide, messy spread of numbers is not very good. So it's not very good data. We're not going to trust it. So usually, if a measurement seems accurate but is very, very imprecise, we really don't pay much attention to it. Something that is accurate and is precise is the best measurement to trust.